This is a production of WTVI PBS Charlotte. Hi, Amy. Uh, hang on a second. I've got to help cast us off here. You know, the Catawba River is our water source and also our power source. It's a place for boaters to cruise and for the rest of us to take in the waterfront views. But for the Riverkeeper volunteers who are out here on the water every day, well, they say what they view is oftentimes not very pretty. You ready, CD? It's the lifeblood of our whole community. Volunteer C.D. Collins guides the Riverkeeper boat out to open water to the lake where he's lived for 55 years. And I want this to be here for myself the rest of my life, but for my grandchildren and their children. It's such a beautiful, natural environment. But the nearest power plants with their huge toxic coal ash ponds have been here on the Catawba even longer. That is water that's coming directly from the coal ash ponds into Lake Wiley. We wouldn't know the, the levels of arsenic and other toxins in this water if it weren't for the Riverkeeper. Sarah Benke didn't find out about the coal ash ponds near her riverfront home until she was diagnosed with cancer. I felt like I had to do everything that I could as a mom um, to protect my kids from that. And Catawba Riverkeeper have been testing the water in this lake, testing the fish that come out of this lake. They've been testing the base of those earthen berms that support the coal ash ponds. They've been doing this day in and day out. They have the education, the expertise to do all of that. They were able to provide me with all the really solid data and information that I needed. Sediment, I think, is, is really the number one uh, pollut pollutant that we need to um, concern ourselves with. Volunteer Ellen Goff joins us on the Riverkeeper boat just offshore from a huge lakefront construction project with wide stretches of red clay mud where acres of tall trees used to be. There is no permit for monitoring and regulating runoff. And runoff can occur from construction sites, it can occur from unstable ground around a home, erosion, it comes down creeks and streams, anywhere that water is literally running off the land. Stormwater from Charlotte makes the river's runoff problem even worse. So does animal waste that makes it to the Catawba from these chicken farms. That's right, all the runoff that, that comes within a basin eventually funnels down into the Catawba River. But Charlie McCrory shows us a shopping center near his home on Brown's Cove that's working with the river keeper, carving out big basins to reduce all that runoff. The river keeper had the attention of the city council. So this is a success story? I think so. I think that they did the right construction project here with the right controls, and it's resulted in an area that's now it could be considered a park. It's been a success story, and I think even the geese will agree. Most people don't really think about what happens if their tap was to go dry. That's because below the surface of the Catawba is where the water treatment plants draw billions of gallons that supply millions of homes and businesses. Hard to imagine that supply would ever dry up. But certain trends or projections suggest that, for example, there was one study that says the Catawba River could literally sort of run out of water um, by 2050. Volunteer Michael Lindsay remembers the four-year drought on the Catawba back in the late 90s, leaving his cove here on Lake Norman mostly high and dry, which is why the Riverkeeper also focuses on water conservation. When we have another major drought, the next time we have that drought, it could impact folks in the home. We could have water rationing, right? And we could have water rationing over two, three, four years, right, before the water tables might recover. We don't want to be an organization that just paints gloom and doom, right? We want to be an organization that's helping the community, the, the basin, um, maintain the quality of life that we've got. People are so busy these days and so distracted. Um, it, it takes a advocacy group to keep these issues front and center so that we don't forget that pollution doesn't sleep and violators don't go away and we need everyone's help to protect it.
And the Riverkeeper also brings hundreds of kids out here to the Catawba every summer. For them, their classroom is a kayak, a week of splashing around, but also a chance to learn about the river that someday they'll inherit. Amy?